So, uh, my name is Wangeshi Kones. I'm married to Levi Kons, and we have three daughters, an adult, a teenager, and a eight-year-old. We've been married and living together for 10 years now. Eh, it's been 10 years. Okay, 10 years can really be short if you can keep the fire burning. Yeah, my name is Levi Kones. I am a husband, a father. I I'm also a God-fearing person and a lover of life. Uh, very married to one Wangeshi Kones. And welcome to our home and our life. The surprising thing for me, the surprise was in the diagnosis. It was that the journey was so intense. You know, after the diagnosis happened, uh, which by that time, of course, thanks to Google, I'd already known there could be something wrong. I just did not know the magnitude of it. And then, of course, that first night was a bit heavy because we... We both didn't sleep. We both didn't sleep, but we were not really talking either. I was just thinking my own things. She was thinking my own things. I was thinking, what if I die? Atasina nyumba, sija jengea watoto. I was a bit, you know, uh, you know, you, you look at the full value of your life and ask yourself, so what's, what's in it, you know, uh, for me? What do I leave behind? And I worry now about my children, you know, how young they are. And of course, her, I was thinking, oh, this could happen to her again, you know, because, um, uh, of course, I realized this was not something that would have been good to happen to one person. People would say, oh, the common denominator is you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're the one who has lost husbands. You must be the problem, mm -hmm. you know. So that was one thing. But then when we got into the journey and, the, and started, the, the operations were not bad. I managed to power through those ones relatively well. It's the chemo that was the issue, because I, I walked uh, fairly quickly after the operations. One thing she was very resilient about was she was showing up in the morning at six o'clock. She's coming to bathe me, she's coming to feed me, she's coming to walk around there. She will leave, come back around lunch hour, leave, come back in the evening, stay until eight o'clock, and still she has to come home and deal with the children. We had been together by that time about uh, four, years. four years. five years. It was 2018. Yeah, five years. Yeah, we had been together five years. One of the things I underestimated was the amount of mental pressure it took on me. And I don't think I communicated very well. And so, you know, even part of that snapping and getting out of uh, uh, thought is, you know, you're only seeing things from one parameter as a patient. Eh? You only see it's you who is sick, after all. It's you who is dying. Even sometimes I'll tell her, you know, you, you're telling me all these things, but these are things happening to me. I'm the one who's getting an operation. I'm the one who's getting chemo. I'm the one who stands a chance to die. And then you, you become myopic in that thought that it then leads you to hurt people who are around you, who really care about you. You know, like because of the way I was not communicating, I became the, the issue that made her have a war of words with my mom. And those are two women I both love. So... It's a difficult place to be when it's you who is the common denominator of what is happening uh, here at this point in time. So, I know. One particular moment was really, was really trying when I actually disappeared from home because I was so upset you know, over the whole cancer thing becoming the thing, you know, you lead your, and I tell people, when you have a patient who's undergoing cancer, try not to also make it about cancer. Okay, unknowingly, and I don't think that was the intention from her, is you care, you want to tell them, okay, don't eat that, don't eat that, do this, do that. But then it becomes like the disease has now taken over your life. So everything is just a cancer story, you know, from the food you eat to the way you walk to where, whether you can sit in the sun or not, it becomes a cancer story and it just makes you lose your mind. And you're like, you know what, if this is what I'm going to live with, then I would rather die. Naishe, naishe. So that journey was, it had its intense moments. There were moments, of course, of, 
of uh, serious laughter. Like one time she really uh, helped by pointing out something in the in the room that was not going around uh, right with the drip, with the, with the chemo, which the nurses had completely overlooked. You know, she was very good with the whole mixing of uh, herbs and things on the blender. Nilikunya vitwata siji vitu mingi sana. Nasikia tu grrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
So at, at eight, you should be feeling dizzy. At four, I don't expect you to be walking. So he's busy saying, oh no, let me go home, change my clothes then. So I'm like, you're going to change your clothes to what? So I told him, you know what? Just uh, be admitted. Me, I will hang around before you get admitted. Nini, time you may move. I'll get an Uber, go home, then I come back. So that time they had to put him into an uh, uh, iron supplements to protect his bone marrow. And now I have to look for people to, to donate blood because uh, apparently the hospital didn't have a blood bank. At the back of my mind, I'm thinking this must be a tumor somewhere because where is this blood going to? Where will this tumor be? And then... Uh, uh, how am I going to do this life? I mean, it's just the other day I got married. Now this is sickness. Many things are going through my mind. But I told myself, you know what? Um, I'm not going to be scared because I believe this is for a reason. And I, I want to believe this, this disease is not coming to kill him. It's coming so that God can use us as a testimony. So from the onset, I just told my mind that. And even during his low moments, I knew at the back of my mind and I had faith in that, that he's not going to die. He's, this, he's in this for a, for a reason and not to die, but for a testimony so that one day he can talk to people about this and give them hope and um, help them believe that really people get sick and they get healed. You know, sometimes you, uh, you may not perceive love as love when it's the things you may not want to hear. But there's love in everything, even in telling me to take a concoction, you know, or drinking it with me. That's love. Love is not just I love you. There's love in, uh, in, in, being, in being present. There were many days I was in the room, and I was in the room alone. I'm on the laptop, I'm doing things, nee, 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 then she calls me, and I'm getting chemo. Because when I was able to get chemo at Nairobi Hospital, like I was able to go there with a the laptop and sit there the whole day. I was like, you go to work. And I sit there for eight hours and I come out. And then she uh, called me, like, you're sure you don't need anything? No, no, let me just come. Let me just need then Sometimes she would come. And sometimes we would just sit, the two of us. And then when we went to India, really, it was, you know, we had never, because we got married and had never been alone together for more than three days. And suddenly, I think the, when we were alone together, it was honeymoon. I think that was like five days. Yeah. Suddenly, we were in India for two weeks. Oh, 26, 26 days almost, I think. And I think the other thing I could say is, you, 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 you know, one of the things I used to wonder about in the, in the beginning was whether we had had some issues in the marriage because we had not had counseling. Because we didn't. We just got together. And then we got married. And even when we got married, we didn't ever formally attend any church counseling or anything like that. So in the back of my mind, just, oh, maybe counseling would have helped us, maybe if we had gone for premarital counseling, but we did get counseling on the, on the job, so to speak. I think the fact that we had issues with family members was one, because it helped us to, you know, come together, iron out some issues. The sickness was another point that gave us on the job training uh, literally. Several times we had tried to attend some seminars, but then we, we discovered we were with very young couples who didn't have our dynamics. They were young, they were childless, they were maybe expecting a first child. We were not, we were young marriage-wise, but we are parents of, of, uh, of big children. So we don't really have a counseling pattern that fits us, you know, that was able to be tailored to what we could fit into. So then we found we could not really uh, survive in those counseling forums. I think we went for two. Yeah. yeah. And then you have to change yourselves because me, I was the type who would say, let's go on a break or would want the relationship to be over if I feel it's too difficult. Her, she doesn't really say that, but she, she just shuts down. You know, so you can't have a conversation about something that was so hard, so it's, it's over. So you both have to break out of the way you are used to dealing with something to deal with it in a different manner that then brings the two of you on the table. So you're not walking out and you're not shutting down. You're not just, because a lot of people will be together but they've shut down from the marriage. So on paper you're together, uh, people see you, but in reality you're not. Everyone is living their own life and doing their own things, which is not really a marriage because we, we are 
very uh, big proponents of why be married if you really can't be everything. You have to try to make it to make it work. And you know, with that constant trying and constant trying, it's become a, a lot easier for me. I feel like you know now. Even our argument, sometimes I look back, after all the events, sometimes we are just driving, I'm like, we have grown so much. Even our arguments are not as silly. Yeah. There are many things, you know, you just, you watch it here or you understand, and there are so many things, she has also done the same thing, and then there are other things, you just look at it, and then you just laugh about it. You know, it, it takes something very uh, uh, serious for us to get to a point where we are both 30 uh, crazy man and even then we have managed to find a way to come back from it the most important thing in a relationship first is to become open to each other you know there's this perception that ladies have that there is this secret that I have to keep some of them are the way they are brought up because they are told you must have mattress banking you must have a kachama just in case when you get into a relationship, get into a relationship of a uh, just uh, of uh, just there is no just in case moments, and open up to each other so that you are able to work together. So uh, there will be no uh, incidents when Kones will be arguing with me because he realized I have kept this money that is not aware of. There will be no incident when uh, Kones will be arguing with me because I told him we are going for a function at this place only for him to realize I wasn't there, I was in another place. Because maybe I told him I'm working this weekend because I'm hiding to go for a chama. But because he's not aware of that chama, I have to say I'm working and I'm not really working. That is the day he will meet that colleague of mine and by chance, I say, hey, you guys, you finished the gig. Then she, she'll be like, which gig? And yet I said I went for a gig and I was going for a chama. So if, you, if I'm ready to offer information, this person might hold on information for some time. But if they realize that I'm always offering information, I think they, it will, they'll be a bit flexible for them to offer information. And uh, there will be no scenarios where we are arguing because they realize I have some money that I have kept somewhere. Then why are, we, are you in that relationship? Then you'd stay your way, I stay my way. Everyone stay with their own secret. But if you are, to, if you are living together and are doing things together to make things better for you and for your children, then you should be walking on the same path. There is no... Then you remove that aspect of this is my money, this is your money. Because there's no your money or my money. Because we know all monies, where they are coming from, what our goals are, and that way we grow faster and easier. There's a lot of worry about you know, money and, and what relationships can do without, with, with money. Uh, for us, incidentally, our domains have never been about money. Uh, you know, the, most of the time, it's been about other things. The money aspect is very kidogo. Uh, if I drop dead today, there's no account of mine she cannot access, and vice versa. It's never the uh, there's money. She's you know, sometimes she'll come and tell me the chama paid me dividends. Sometimes I don't even know how much chamas pay for, mm -hmm. for 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 dividends, but she'll come and tell me, and you know, and it it'll be good. Sometimes I'll get a gig. And there's a time I would, those chamas would need to send me money and because I don't have an account in that bank and, and she, he has an account with that bank, I'll just tell them, yeah, just, them just deposit to my husband's account. And I will not have those fears of that I will not get that money. Because one, it is not money that he's not aware of and two, it's money he knows the goal for. So if it is imp as yeah. that, that money is important to me the same as it is important to him. And because we have uh, sat down and discussed this, what we are going to do with this money, then we stick to the, to the, to the, to the reason why we have yeah. this money. But even that needs a discussion. I think it's important for people to be just honest and sit down and talk about their money. Because be, I, one of the things I always say, we always say actually, there's no point of being together if you can't put your monies together. Mm. Then you're just two single people. Leave us single people and, or co-parent then. 
there's really no points of saying so and you are so separate in terms of the finances that you're operating you you don't have to necessarily have a joint account you don't have to necessarily you know uh because we have different accounts in fact we've never had a joint account but you have to be forthright on the table and say this is what's happening with me and my money this is what's happening with you and your money and this is our bills this is what we are going to do about it this is our project this is what we're going to do about it and you and you get on board with it and you do it and that way you are living the life that two people should live uh, uh, together because money they do say is the number one reason why relationships break you can't change by doing something the same way one of the things we stop doing is engaging our fights on on the phone so we took out the phones if we are going to have a, a discussion and it's going to be an intense discussion we're going to have it it was a bit hard for him it was hard because me i like to write he, See, i'm a writer he likes yani he would write <laughs> <laughs> you look at your whatsapp like this you there like 20 messages mm. and they're not short short messages they're like paragraph paragraph but i realized it wasn't helpful because you know even in writing sometimes you think in my part i was thinking maybe i write to you so you can read and really understand where I'm coming from. Then it hit me after a while of writing and not getting very good conclusions that there's what I write and mean. Then there's, there's what, what you I read understand. and understand. So I'm um, like, you know, I would talk, I would, I so would read one the, paragraph, then I respond to that paragraph. <laughs> then I analyze it and point it out and put pointers. Like you said this, no. This is what you've done, and this is what you mean. You said this. This is not what I meant. This is what I meant. Yeah. You know, it will be a back and forth, like for a whole. Even the meaning of the word can, can change. <laughs> yeah. You know, or this use of slang. Like sometimes I use some some slang that I used to use in America. That she's like really. You get. You have to get to a place of you're you're tired of the way you do things. The, the way things always go. You know, have you reached a point with your partner where the argument you know. You start this argument it ends up the and same way it you and it ends up yeah so if you get tired and it takes two and both of you are tired and you know like this conversation that we had of how tired we are didn't even happen in in this house we had to go somewhere and just you know realize we are tired of the way things are is there any concession we can make you know and i remember one time she wrote she actually wrote a list you remember a list mm-hmm. of the things that and then we asked for us it was a question of what can we do different because i noticed she was so tired and when she's tired her it shows even on her face she gets puffy eyed she looks like she's been beaten in the morning and i looked at my wife and say hey quilt and then she conders like overnight so ni kona hata si poa unajua you you with someone and all you're doing is you're draining them now and uh so she wrote me a list of all the things she thought that I was not we will end the list brief mimi nilikupatia kama vitu tatu but ilikuwa intense zangu zilikuwa zako zilikuwa bullet points zangu zilikuwa ni sama I got to this point of making a very long list of things that I wanted him to change because I had gotten to a point where I had zoned off and i was now concentrating on his mistakes i mean what is wrong with this guy i say this he says this i tell him to do this he doesn't do it he takes things differently he assumes a b c d which is important to me and all those things and so i was you know i would rehearse every day and i would say the day he talks to me this is what i'll tell him and because i don't want to forget any point i had to note them down and uh at first he didn't take it well because he felt like i was doing a list of his mistakes but i when i explained to him at least thank god he understood why i had gotten to that point the list was wow. long like around 11 items wow. so i took like two hours to explain because every item i would mention then yeah. he'd like no no no, no but that is not a big deal what i would explain to points. him I had to explain to him why it's a big deal to me. You know there are these small things that uh happen in a relationship the other person don't really care much about them but they really matter to the other person. Yeah and um yeah and uh his were three major points that were heavy 
<laughs> that also took us some time to discuss. But the good thing is that uh, he didn't brush off my points at that point in time and I didn't also brush off his points. And any time now an argument would arise, you'd go back to what he said and what he expect and how you expected to react on uh, that particular issue. One bad thing that people do in a relationship is uh, always bringing back the past. Things that you have already discussed and done away with, you realize that they are resurfacing in new arguments and you feel like you had not really ironed out that issue. So you forget the issue at hand and start now going back to what you had already discussed and ironed out. And um, it was difficult for him to understand that I'm using such scenarios as a reference of why this has come up and we agreed we are going to do this differently and um, yeah he's been uh, patient to wait for me it was easy for him to really grow out of this uh, than me me I was still uh, doing baby steps and I start running then I can jump and now we can walk together at the same pace for men I think one of the the, the, the biggest you know, across the board thing for guys, really. It's just to be able to feel as if you are listened to when you say something. And I think many men would allude that to be one of the biggest problems they have. And sometimes it's misconstrued to be, you want to be heavy handed, or on the other hand, maybe you're expecting to be a doormat uh, to the other person or to become somebody who's a, who makes the other person a doormat yourself. And it takes different forms, I think, for different relationships. And I think for hours, uh, I was able to be, to communicate myself in as far as what I was thinking and where I was coming from. When I think that you don't listen to me about you know this and this and this, and uh, I think uh, it has grown because sometimes there's a maybe there's a hidden power play. Sometimes it's out there, but I think every couple has got maybe like a hidden power play of sorts where. Uh, you're maybe constantly trying to push an agenda, both of you, you know, you see something differently. I mean, and you can never see something the same way. You're driving into a parking lot and your wife says, park over here. But to a morning, you know, you reverse into Palembele. You both want parking. But you are looking at it from different. But the end result now is to focus on the fact that, yes, we both want parking. We do go about it in, in, in different ways. Maybe there are times I need to uh, look at this way could be a bit easier to do so. Maybe there's a time she needs to see it my way could be a bit easier to do so. And you know, that finding of you know this uh, hypothetical parking I'm talking about is what needs to be agreed on on how to get there. So once you begin to see that, you can begin to uh, accept that sometimes she can say park here, and you're like, ah, oh, yeah, no problem. I'll, or another time you can say, well, I've already seen that one. And you say, yeah, that's fine. Let's go to that other one. Then you discover that there's a give and take on a relationship. No one has got the key. And no one has got the solution. And no one is the dictator. There are times there's a very serious thing that's going on. And your wife says something about it. And she's absolutely 100% correct about how it should, be, it should be done. There are sometimes you say, and you've also seen something that you're very correct about. So if you get to the point where you can allow yourself to give and take, and not feel like you've lost when you have given. Then you realize you have now matured and it's still part of love. And it's not, you're not counting, you know, I allowed you last time, then I allowed you next time. Then I, when am I going to be allowed to say something in this house? You know, it's, it's not that. Because the union, the collective car is moving. And that's what we want. We want the union to move regardless of who's making the big, biggest moves. But in parenting, we have the, the uniform mind is the same and the treatment is the same and the love and care is the same. Most of the time I took my cues uh, uh, from her and from what I thought was the right thing to do. And it was helpful because she's the parent who's been with them all this time. I'm the parent who has come into the picture. The first thing I wanted to remove was the notion of step-parent because I felt it comes with with a certain negative connotation to it, that as a step parent, you're probably not going to be as objective as a parent. So 
in me becoming a parent, then I have to accept these children as completely mine and treat them the very same way, as the best as I can, as to how they would feel. You know, because they're aware, nine and four years old, they are aware that you're not exactly their bloodline. And people around them are aware, of course. The relatives sometimes will tell them, oh, you know, your dad like this, like this, you know, that kind of thing. So uh, the contention really, I think, has been, was, was probably in the discipline. I don't know whether I should discipline, how far I should discipline, you know. What should I, what can I say really, you know, to be, yeah. Yeah, and uh, one good thing was that uh, well, I guess she had my back all the way. So many times they would be used to going to her for something and she would refer them, go and ask your father. Go and speak to him, go and do what. So it's, it's encouraged to come there and, you know, if there's, a, is a, if there's, a, there's an issue I have, of course, as, as, may, as they have matured, there are two different dynamics we take when we go to uh, matters to do with even um, admonishing them. We take different approaches and agreeably, you know, sometimes she's got to bring out the big guns because it will be easier for her to do so, you know. And sometimes when I say something and I'm saying this will not happen in this house, she'll back me right up. So that's been important. The other thing that has been important is after the third one came, the balance has been the same. What we do for you, we'll do for this one, we'll do for this one. There is no special person. There is no person getting special privilege. You, the kind of schools you go to, you go to the same ones. If we are going to buy something, it's the same thing. And we took it as far as even relatives. Because sometimes relatives will also pick their favorites amongst them. You find somebody, you've sent your children to somewhere, and then they have bought this one more shirts than the others. We were like, what the heck? You know, what are you trying to do here? So the balance has always uh, uh, remained the same. And I believe even now when, when we speak, I, I, I get a, a sense of feeling like they completely stopped along the way seeing me as, I don't even think they even saw me so much as a stepfather. They completely stopped. It's funny. I go to some schools and some parents will tell me, oh, you look like you're firstborn so much. And I laugh. I'm like, God, it's so interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and we are the, we are the dark ones or we, or, or, you know, or we tell stories. But one thing that we have kept going that has remained the most is that when it comes to matters to do with them, we don't have a, a divide on these kids. We never have. Even with our own issues that we may have had, the way we deal with them, what they go to her and it's a no, it's a no this way. If they come this way and it's a yes, it's going to be a yes that way. If it's a no this way, there's no thinking around anybody here. We double check and find out, have you talked to so-and-so today? What did they say? They said this, this, this. Of course, they tried it, you know, children being children. They tried it at some point, you know, game. And children will test you to see how far they can test you with such a story and then take advantage of that of that story. They've done that to our nannies, so we know. The nannies have been the victims sometimes. And also what really helped us to be able to to bring them together and bond them. And um what actually helped me to be able to drive them to accept him and respect him. As, uh, as their dad and uh, up to this point how it is, is because even when we had those conflicts, even when we are not talking for days, you, you keep it in the room. So when we are out here, we'll act like nothing has happened. And then now when we go back to our room, we are back to normal. I remember we were not talking. To normal cold So war. we are not going to, to talk because now at the kids. So we go to church, we are laughing, we are against the rose, nini. But when we get into that room, we are just back to default settings. But you don't give them the opportunity to have that space where they feel, ah, these people, they are even concerning. Why do we even respect this man? Or uh, this guy is even testing my mother. Even those days when he would walk and not come back home. There's no time I've sat down to discuss with them. Now you know your dad is going out, what, what, no. So they'd be like, ah, mom, where is that? Say, sometimes I would say he left very early going to work. That time I don't know where he is. But you see, uh, the most important thing to do is to protect his image and make sure that it, the respect that is they give him as a dad remains constant. Whether we are in good terms or bad terms, whether we are talking or not, whether I'm annoyed, I will still... Um, 
make sure that I cover up whatever is going on in our room and don't spill it over to the children. That is really, really important. And also even when we would snap, because there are some time you would snap and then you remember the kids are here, you have them to correct it. So you just talk something else to overwrite it. And then uh, now when you get back to the room, you're like, hey, you know, you could not have answered like that in front of, and like, yeah, yeah. Uh, it it just slip of a tongue. I'm sorry, let's try and do it better. So before that time, it was a bit hard for me because I wasn't used to somebody else who is around my circle. It was me and my children. So sometimes I would snap and forget that he's there, which some uh, which made him feel bad and felt like uh, I am becoming a bit disrespectful because I'm annoyed. So I had to work on that. And anytime he would start talking and I, I, I just realize I'm getting annoyed, the first thing I would do is who is around me. Then I would decide whether to talk or not. And you know, for him also, he's used to tackling issues there and then. So sometimes he's, he, he would also make me feel bad because maybe we are with friends. Then he snaps and he wants us to discuss that matter there and then. Then I'm like, but your friends are here. Now you want us to discuss this in front of your friends, Nini family. But uh, over time, we've, uh, you just, it's a, it's a day at a time. You learn how to do things differently. You practice them and then you perfect them. And then now it becomes you, part of you. And then feedback. Feedback, yeah. you know. Ever since uh, when, the, when the girls turned 12, 12, 13, every time they've turned 12 and 13, we've always, we've always gone on the feedback route. We would have dinner and say, this dinner is the dinner that you can say anything. Uh, speak your mind. Of course, the first dinners, she didn't tell us anything. Afraid whether, you know, and we we're like, no, it's not going to be held against you, blah, 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 blah. But over time, she said a lot. You know, and you get that feedback, and that has helped relationships. Uh, just not on just me and uh, the girls, and the girls, all, both, both of us. So, because they know that there is a point that they can also air their views mm -hmm. and give their concerns. Of course, some of their concerns, you know, sometimes, you know, this one is not too much. But we know. <laughs> but, but you you listen and that and then that helps you give uh, the feedback because it's the, i believe that for parenting you're a coach and a coach you are you are a, a trainer you're a friend you're a disciplinarian you're an administrator you're a you're a what's it called a motivational speaker so you have to put on those boots at different points there are places we will say something and it will not be discussable. Like going to church, we are going to church. Mm. You can decide to become an atheist when you are big and grown, but in this home you will go. Or, uh, or you know, do your homework. It's going to happen. And then there are places where you, you will entertain some friendship and you'll say, okay, so what do you think about this? What are your ideas? What are your thoughts? And then there are places where you're a trainer, so you're showing them what's, what you would like them to be, you know. Practically, either by a, by a work, a chore, or something, and then there are places you you can only do but motivation. Like our child, is, you know, is about to go to form one. We can only motivate this one until you know. Even today, we are telling her there are going to be some hard days, but power through them. It will be fine. You're also the voice in their head telling them those things. So you balance it out, and and then the child realizes as they grow older that you really have their best interests in heart, at heart. And children have a uncanny way of knowing. Once they know that, they love you anyway. Yeah. And then the other important thing is uh, you you talk to your children candidly about things that are happening in the today's world. So we don't beat around the bush like about uh, LBTQ. We talk them we talk to them about those issues as it is. So we tell them you will meet them in school. You will meet them when you are playing outside. You will meet them when they are young. So you should not allow this. We train them the limits. How far can somebody go into telling you things? How far can somebody go into into touching your hair or touching your? You, we, you tell them everything that happens in black and white. So if it is Bella, 
at her age we tell her yes you'll be told you're beautiful you'll meet you'll you're going to meet a young man they'll tell you this bad boys are there they behave like this we tell them they will tell you let's go watch a movie in their house let's go do this but their intention is not that is this we don't just tell them what you are being told by our parents that the bad boys are bad okay by boys are bad but nowadays so when they meet girls those girls that are bad will you tell them that girls are bad too so we you create a, an open uh, platform where you can discuss with your children anything you only know how to the proper words to use while you are discussing with them such matters because even when you don't discuss with them they will uh, find for themselves what these things are because you the, you are seated with them here they tell you please give me your phone you don't know what they are searching on your phone and um, i believe that the best way for a child to learn about something is when they learn from you as a parent first don't allow them to learn from elsewhere and then you are trying to correct it so you would rather tell them so that when they come across these things you they will remember you told them about them and what you told them about it yeah, yeah. and then i think finally it's not just about us because we we are, we are cognizant of the fact that as parents we don't have all the answers mm. so we deliberately try to get them to be in circles where they also get other things or sometimes not even so much all the answers you know sometimes your child will not listen to what you say but we listen to somebody else saying what you say yeah. and hear them you know and they say in the and same say, way and say oh that is so wise and you're thinking please si tunasemanga hivi tu kwa nyumba so <laughs> so we deliberately surround them with people like that although we cannot influence the choices they will make entirely yeah we can influence the social settings and surroundings they are in so where we take them to school where they go to church which families we invite over which kids and parties we go to which camps we send them to you know we can by invite by affecting their social life we can then maybe influence their choices so even we get other mentors like my daughter was going to uh mtc to study nursing and before she went i we got a doctor to go and speak to her you know and organized for a lunch to go sit with her and give her the integrity of what medical school would be like and tell her the entirety of it you know and then surround her with some aunties again who would pour it into her life so we are not just us we we recognize it takes a village to raise a child and so we bring in the village but we select that village oh this relationship has taught me patience Oh patience I tell you and not just patience <laughs> but but patience eh eh ni mtu patience eh but pia i mean ifunza there are many things actually let me tell you how to how to be organized in terms of uh you know the house i thought i was pretty fairly organized possibly clean but this one is clean a clean freak kabisa even in the bedroom and for attack ya kasbu ina a clear clear vitu hapo yani you now there's a lunt when she's cleaning up i just get out of the way i now go for a walk and she welcomes that nenda nikirudi because you get in the way of that you know well, what can happen to you but uh also the the aspect of being able to listen i don't think i was a very good listener before i met wangeshi i think that was a very very good thing and then finally i would say uh loyalty i can stick my life on wangeshi she's loyal very loyal i there are things i would hear about her and i would not believe it because she's i know she's super loyal Mm, thank you. I didn't know about that. I didn't know that about <laughs> myself. <laughs> But yeah. Um I've really learned to uh appreciate the small things that people do to you and you think it's normal like calling you like three times a day. Uh it's when when he doesn't call now I feel like uh what is happening? 
there must be something but uh keeping tabs to someone uh, you not know, because you know they'll come back in the evening at home and you just assume ah si watarudi that is really key unasikia tu sasa yote nika unakatiwa throughout so hata kuna mtu anapata space ya kukukatia <laughs> makes you feel sweet and important yeah that this person cannot last for a whole day without having to call you in between the day and also the concern of that this person uh, as much as you have annoyed them they feel it is important just even if you just say the grace that's a very very important thing that uh, happened to my life because you I don't even remember how many times I prayed in my previous relationship with my partner I found that so so unique and important that even though this person is annoyed he still believes that maybe if you pray something will happen that is really really important that even in your anger you don't concentrate on the anger and forget the omnipresent love that is there that will rejuvenate in the morning and maybe renew your love you never know um it has also taught me the act of forgiveness forgiveness is key or else we, if you dwell on this person has done this to me this person did this to me then it gives you the fears of this person will do this to me so you are never fully uh, in that relationship because there are these perceptions that you have that will happen to you that maybe this person will do so you even when you're doing things like investments like when you're planning on things yes you're planning but there's this part of you that is left saying maybe i'm doing this and this person will do this to me so it keeps on draining you backward the other person is ahead because they don't think you think that about them but you you are here a halfway because one leg is on standby what if it happens so that act of forgiveness has really helped me because now you realize ah this when you forgive each other it's easy for you to grow together and um to continue building on the trust that you have so even when your trust is hurt a bit it's easy for you to rebuild it because you 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 know that we have passed this and now we are moving on together into the next level i, th- I think there's so much focus on february yeah. and okay we make jokes ourselves also crack the jokes yeah we will say happy valentines and no problem but there's too much focus on february as if other months are not going on and love is not needed you know in other places there are women who receive only flowers on valentines day and not any other day because you know uh, it's a day everyone is sending flowers anyway or men who hear from their ladies for the first time that they love them on that particular day because it happens to be the day of love but to be honest the commercialization of love has ruined us because we fail to give this thing keep our belly when in other uh, months years days you need love on eid on christmas morning on jamhuri day my own madraka day on a day with no holiday you need love you need assurance that you know that you are still loved and that you still love uh, love someone you know even between us sometimes she'll tell me i love you i'm like hey but una nipenda eh especially after we have fought and made up i'm like uja uja mu unaenda hapa na pana sisi zienda ni that assurance that assurance is key you know <laughs> and it needs to be said and then there is uh, uh, and then for us we have done random things on days where there is no love being celebrated uh, you know last year she took me on a holiday on a random months random days you know that days i've also taken her to places random days completely you don't have to put a peg on the anniversary or the you know the special day for you to do something just do something and then not give yourself so much pressure what if on february 14th you have no money does that mean you have no love you know you have to be able to overcome that and mature into that place where your love is really daily there's really no no lie to that that it's really daily because as we say uh no man is a hero to his wife they say but it would be really good i keep on telling that that if i died one day and you stood up and you said this man was a good man 
you really meant it. It was really true. It was not a tiyazi. A story for the social media blogs and, uh, and for Nini. And if I stood up and I said, God forbid, that this lady was a good woman, it, it's really coming from my heart. So for us to achieve that, you know, hopefully many, many years away from today, is to keep on building so that we have good memories and we have good thoughts of each other. And because we are building memories every day, away from the houses, the cars, the children, the school fees, the what, the woman I end up with, the person I end up with eventually is her. So we think about it. Even now we discuss our retirement. The two of us, no children, no nothing. They're already going anyway. And so we are thinking of building. We are building towards that and then building our memories with each other. And I think that way we, we get on the right path because the, the love of nowadays is too superficial. Yeah. If you make it a habit of uh, being taking it up to you to take concern of how the other person is feeling, even when they are quiet, don't just assume, hey, we love my frown. Find out why you're quiet. Maybe they are meditating on something, or maybe they were told something that was not good at work. You know, you, they will always look forward to go to that person or to meet you or to talk to you because there's that, that thing you will tell them that makes them feel better. And even if they felt that like they were not important, maybe at work or in a circle of friends who are talking to, to they were talking to, you make them feel important and they, they have a reason to live because they know ah, even though these, these ones don't think I'm important, at least there's that one person who I know values me. So if we um, help our partners to feel valued and important, then that is a very key thing in a relationship.